Hey, what's good everyone? Today we're going to take a look at a Nike classic from 1991, the Nike MXBW in the OG colorway, Persian Violet. And we're going to jump into the details right after the break. So here it is, the Nike Amex BW and the OG colorway Persian Violet. Last time this release was in 2016. This originally released in 1991, also known as the Amex 4 because this is the successor to the Amex 90, which is supposed to be the Amex 3. And the BW refers to big window because even in the advertising, Nike claim that this has the biggest air bubble ever even bigger than on the mx90 and the 2016 pair according to people who own one from that year say this one is closer to the original 2016 was not so close colors were a little bit off the shape was a little bit off and people who do own or used to own the original pair or have one for comparison and this one here say that this one is a lot closer so it looks like they put the same effort into this shoe as with the recrafted amex 90 which is very nice and to be honest i've been looking forward for nike to re-release these because i really want to have one of these because i think this is a dope shoe and this is a staple piece in the nike history of course and this is also a staple piece in the european techno scene this was very popular in the 90s with a lot of people in the dutch gubba scene of course other techno scene throughout europe england as well and germany i wasn't that deep into the techno scene back then uh, more into house stuff when i listened to electronic music but with a bunch of friends we circled through all the clubs and parties at that time of course you saw this shoe on people's feet so this definitely is a staple piece from that era glad they re-released these and i'm glad they put so much effort into these and these came out pretty nice also the materials are nice for a shoe from that era of course it's typical for that era it's made completely out of synthetic materials but this is a typical layout from the 90s we have that black synthetic suede here which is a felt material then a white synthetic leather on top both these panels are extending into the mid where that rubber like nike swoosh is happening that one is wrapping around the heel area continuing into a black color amex branding on top of that in white we have that perforated white leather we have white midsole with a little bit of purple in the midsection going into the heel white amex bubble we have a purple plastic material on the top of the lacing section felt material for the bottom part of the lacing section we have a typical alternate lacing style pattern here very typical for that time from nike i'm not sure if you're supposed to lace them alternatively but I guess if you want to shorten the laces or if you have wider feet or narrow feet, you can put them into the outer lace holes. So whatever you want to do, feel free. We have a neoprene light material around the collar. We have a purple synthetic and a liner black insole with the Nike internationalist branding on top. Purple tongue also made from that neoprene light material. And we have Nike branding. Well, and the stencil design here this is indented into the tongue very nice touch i think according to people who used to own this this is a lot closer like i said to the original also the heel is padded very thick also much closer to the original so that's that we have a black mesh material here on the toe box and in the midsection of the shoe here on top and that's pretty much it um quality wise i do not have many grades with my pair there's a little bit of glue on the black toe box 
And a typical quirk I have with Nike is the panels are not always identical. The white synthetic leather on the left shoe is cut a little bit longer, but other than that, panels are the same. I don't have any glue around the midsole with the uppers connected. They do smell a little bit like glue, but other than that, I'm fine. Oh uh, yeah, outsole. Yeah, black outsole with a purple section in the middle and some white hits there. Also with the Nike branding, of course. And the tread pattern is very, very thick, as you can see. But it's also typical for that time. You can find this as well on the Air Max 90, of course, and 93, I think, and a bunch of other shoes from that time. So, very happy with these. Sizing-wise, I went with a size 13, my true size in New Balance, Asics and Adidas is a 12 and a half. I tend to size up recently in Nike because I think they are rather short for me at least. But I would suggest go with whatever size you're choosing in an MX1 or an MX90, especially in the recrafted version, because I think these basically fit the same as the MX90. Um, I like to have a full finger when I move into the front of the shoe. It's about one and a half inches or so. Of course, if you like a little bit more snug fit, and that's up to you, everybody's preferences are different, uh, but that's at least what I like. Comfort-wise, I think they're fairly comfortable. I think they're exactly the same like an Amex 90. Those recrafted ones, where Tested said he finds them stiff and not comfortable at all. I cannot confirm that at all. I think they are comfortable, at least to me so. But also, comfort is very subjective and everybody thinks about that differently. I think they're all right. Nothing spectacular, of course. It's not a boost, but I'm not a boost fan anyways. I think they should be fine wearing throughout the whole day without any issues. So that's basically it for the review for the Nike Amex BW in the OG Persian Violet colorway. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found all this information useful and I hope I'm going to see you in the next video. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye bye.